Well, let's jump into this video and this is my next project that I'm working with is these earrings. It's a little bright, but let's see if I can fix that a little bit. There you go. These abalone shell earrings. I know there's a hole there, but it's fine. Just because the way he shaped it, it's kind of weird. But the video I'm going to be doing today is showing how to make tassels. Ta -da! With what I'm doing. As you can see here, these are going to be placed on like that and placed here at the bottom. I do have two for one side. They make them, they all have gold cones on them as well. I get them from. Shipwreck. Shipwreck beads are farm on I'll put in the description below where I find these um, cones. But anywho, I'll be attaching them here and here later on. But this is how I make the cones or the tassels to fit inside the cones. So let's get into it. First of all, you need some kind of material. For me, I'm using buckskin split, and this is a colored buckskin. I'm trying to find a really good piece to use. And this piece right here seems pretty good. So this one, like I said, it's split. It does have one outside that's really rough and one that has a real nice suede side. So just be aware of that when you're working with this. So I want to pick a nice spot here. And I do have a, a rotary tool I use for cutting my fiskers. So I need a nice, good two inch, roughly two inch strip by six inches because that's what I'm going to be using for this process. So let's cut it. I oversized cut this because I'm going to be trimming it down to the size I need. So that rotary tool cuts pretty good instead of using the exacto knife. The exacto knife will actually pull the material and cut the piece funny. So let's kind of get it there and square it up. And go across. So that's a little piece I need. Need about six inches. So let's see, six, twelve, six inches roughly. So now I need to kind of get everything lined up and squared. So I actually have this tool here. If you do a lot of fabric cutting and stuff like that, the way I did my clothes, this is actually square. So I can put that on one end, make sure this is flat, put it down. So this is roughly even with this for my rotary tool and around the square up one side, pull the excess off, bring this up. Actually, just make sure it's lined up here. And then bring it down. Then I get my ruler. I have a pretty long ruler. It's a 18 inch ruler. And I can set it on that line here at the bottom. And across. So I have a nice good square edge to work with. Over my rotary tool across it, being very careful. Yeah. And now I have a square edge. So it's straight. And now six inches is where I want to cut it off at. So all the flip is over. Put it at, we'll just do at 13 here. And measure out six, which is probably seven inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, at seven. And I can just line this up with seven on top and seven at the bottom. And cut straight. And there, the excess is off. And now I need to cut one inch strips out of these because that's how wide my tassels are for these little cones. I do roll them up so I just get the Two lined up there, and then two lined up here. Hold it down. 
And there's where my scissors across. Or my tool across. Yeah, I cut it funny. It's fine. I have enough for another. So with this tool, you can kind of make sure you go in one direction and one pass. You saw there, it kind of messed me up. So one pass, straight across, cut it one inch by six inches. And I can go across this one. Right there, have enough for. Hey, look at that. Two strips at one inch. Boom. So here, you just want to place it on. Make sure it's straight. I like this little cutting mat because it has all the lines on it. So I do place, place them next to each other. I'm not cutting them both at the same time. I'm just cutting one at a time. And I'm roughly cutting them at an eighth of an inch. Which on the ends of my marker here, there's actually little marks that I have at an eighth of an inch. So I can set it to those little marks at both ends. That's why I have a long ruler. You get the cutting mats a little smaller. This is a Fisker's cutting mat. So I'm going to cut it from here. Run it straight one time. Pretty good. I'm going to stop roughly here at that dot, a quarter inch mark. So about there, down, remove it down, and just repeat the process over and over until I get all my pieces cut. Yeah, you could go bigger. You can go as wide as you want, as thin as you want. If you want to freehand this, you can as well. Doesn't necessarily have to be an eighth of an inch, it could be a quarter inch, whatever size pleases you. So you see there's an extra piece here. I love this one here. Next to it. Is because when the ruler is here, you actually well bend your ruler, up, ruler upwards. So I have to keep a little piece there to help keep the ruler even all the way across. So once you get it done and you have it all cut, you should end up with your tassels. Like that. Some of them are uneven, but hey, you're not gonna notice. So I have my cone here. And all I do here is just roll it like so. And then I just put it in here like that. You can see, da -da, you have a cone. There's more process to this. I mean, you are going to need something like a head pin. So you see here is a head pin. You can also get it there from like shipwreck beads or anywhere in place jewelry stores, Michael's Hobby Lobby, same place with these. But with this, I kind of just put it in here and it holds it. See, well, bad example. You want to put like a little a bead here at the end of it. Let me try to find one real quick. Can't find one, something sacrifice one off a hook. So, see. so this is a small bead, just two millimeters if you can find one. And put it on your head pin so it doesn't go through. Then you can put your head pin through your comb, like so.
And once that's done, you just roll this up. Like so. And then you just put it through here. And you have your tassel. Like so. I had to get this a little bit bright. There we go. Your tassel like so. So with this, if you have a um, use bed in your pliers, I mean, go a little bit more, cut it up a spot, maybe what, quarter, half inch, three quarters, or half inch to, I don't know, three eighths inch long, because I almost going to bend it, just so it gives me a little eyelet. I know there's a certain plier for this. I have it here somewhere, but I can't find it right now. But this is kind of a crude, crude way of doing it. There's several ways of doing this. It's just, I'm not thinking right now. So like that. So you make a little eyelet on top of it. Then you have it. And now you can attach it to here. Which the best way I found is if you have a jump ring. Let me uh, have gold jump rings. I'm gonna use later so it looks better, but just for examples right now. If you have a jump ring, you can use this and open up your jump ring like so. And then for your part here, if I'm trying to find all my pieces I need, give me a minute. I'll... Okay, so if I have a little all or a little something that would work perfect here, but I have my scissors, I can just poke a hole through it. You can see, it kind of went through the back. And you can get your jump ring and put it through here. But this is the one that you have your backing on and everything. Then you put your jump ring through and close it up. And there it is. But at the same time, you want to make sure when you're doing your edging, you actually secure this by running your thread crisscross through the jump ring. So it doesn't actually pull through, but you're gonna have put your bucks can back in or wherever through it on it. So that's how I do mine. You see the jump ring going through it, and through the little ring, and you actually want to glue this down too as well. So you use E6000 glue or some kind of your gel super glue to secure that. Since these are a little ribbed, it actually holds it a little better. So just like that, and. That's one, and when I get the other ones done, it will have the other side connected as well to it. Here. So. And I'll be doing, you can do the same thing in the top here for your um, hook, if you're going to a hook, RPs and um, kidney hooks for it as well. Just add a little jump ring to the top, and you can secure your can you hook to it to the top as well on top? So I'm gonna be adding this to the top here as well. So this will be a long fringy piece. I'm gonna do a wrapped edge on this as well, but that's later. I just want to show you how I do the fringe and how I attach it. It's this quick video. Hopefully it helps you. Um I'll kind of leave links in it as well to all the material. And thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.